Hello everyone, my name is Travis Hove. I am a game design student over at Drexel University and today I'm going to be showing you some of the research that I've been doing into automated photogrammetry pipelines uh, here during my undergrad at Drexel. Uh, all the information that I'm going to be showing you today is available at my website which is listed down below and I'll have as a link in the description. First of all, I wanted to just give a huge shout out to Deborah Isaac, who is my Side Effects Houdini mentor over at Drexel. Thank you, Deb, so much for uh, making all this possible and encouraging me to upload this tutorial to Side Effects uh, website. So the goal of my research uh, over the past three months or so has been to create game engine ready assets using photogrammetry. It's something that I explored in uh, various game engines and various applications. Uh, but the tedium of this process was something that just, it took too long. It would, you know, get in the way of other projects and other workflows, and it was something that would be uh, very time consuming. So I wanted to explore ways of automating this process while also being as indie friendly as possible, meaning that uh, democratizing this entire process and getting it to a point where it is as close to free as possible. The result was a game ready asset uh, in this proof of pipeline with all of the baked down details uh, along with automated retopology and a really nice simple export into Sketchfab or a game engine of your choice such as Unreal or Unity. And with that we're going to get right into the Houdini demonstration. Again a full documentation of this is available at nogginstudios.com research and I'll be linking that down below for anyone who is interested in continuing this pipeline in Houdini 18. So hopping directly into the scene here, there's a few different things that you might notice. One of them is that we are going to be using the Game Dev Toolkit. This is available on the Side Effects Labs uh, GitHub page, and this is going to be essential to the entirety of the pipeline. We're going to be using a lot of the nodes and SOPs that are in here in order to clean up our photogrammetry later, and it is also required for the Alice Vision photogrammetry SOP that we're going to Using. This is going to be the main powerhouse, the uh, most uh, time consuming part of this, uh, but it is going to produce some pretty amazing results. That plugin is completely free. It's something that I've used in projects in the past, and I highly, highly recommend it. For the sake of this demo, there is uh, already a Alice Vision uh, SOP placed down, and this has given itself time to cook and produce the mesh that is over to our left here. Uh, this entire mesh was made using just this one node and the parameters here can kind of guide you through what it is that we're doing here. The project name and cache directory, all of these things are pretty self-explanatory. You're going through and caching all of this data and making sure that's a part of your scene. All in all, the solve that you see on your left here is done using 32 images from a Canon T3i using a 22 millimeter lens. This was taken around sunset and during an overcast day out here in Philadelphia, so the lighting is relatively even. Uh, this was very much a quick and dirty, let me get some photos on my way to class kind of shoot. Um, but this was enough to produce some pretty great results, uh, even for other aspects like this car tire that seemed to make its way into the solve. Um, but we're going to be focusing on getting just the base of this tree and all of the different aspects within there. Uh, to add these images and to make them available, it's as simple as hitting add images and selecting all of the images that you want to have within your pipeline and letting this cook. Uh, on my computer, which is an Alienware M15, um, i7 processor, 1080 uh, graphics card, it took about 22 minutes to solve, uh, which all in all is not bad at all for the amount of detail that we're getting in this solve. Um, these solve times can vary depending on how many photos you have, uh, how large the space is that you're trying to solve for, and all in all, uh, the times can be very much dependent on what kind of details you're trying to capture. In my case, this was very limited data that I was sh sending in, but we got a very nice and clean result. So uh, once you have all of these things plugged in, you'll go ahead and hit that cook button, and it'll take roughly, um, <clears throat> in this case, 22 minutes uh, for this uh, set of photos to solve. However, that time will vary depending on the subject that 
Once we have this result, you'll see that based off of our grid here, we're a little bit lopsided. Uh, most photogrammetry softwares aren't always correct on getting the Y up value that we're trying to achieve. And in order to get around that, it's a very simple, quick and easy node, and that is our straighten node. So if we hop into the parameters for this node, you'll see that it's looking for a group type. Now this group type, um, you can change between uh, primitives, points, edges, and really all it's doing is that it's evaluating the original model that we had. And you can go through and select different values and points in here uh, that you want to determine as your up value. So if in our case, I highlighted parts of the ground here that were facing straight up, and the alignment actually turned out very, very close to where we want it to be. From there, we throw it into an axis align node. This axis align node is part of the game dev toolkit, and it basically does a few little tricks that uh, normally you would have to do using a transform node, uh, such as centering and evaluating, evaluating a Y min and centering all of this onto the origin point. And you can see we got pretty close here to zero, zero, which is where we want it to be. And from there, you can continue to align this uh, with another transform node. That way we get our tree trunk directly on our origin point. This will make it a lot easier when placing it into game development uh, pipelines, having everything zeroed out at an origin that's easier to manipulate um, and easier to rotate as well. From here, we hop into a box clip node. So this one does take a little bit of time to solve. Um, however, it is creating a solve on all ends of our geometry. So normally, if we were to just want to take the ground uh, out of this scene, so if there was a lot of extraneous uh, information at the bottom, we could go ahead and insert one clip node However, this is going around and creating six of these nodes and allowing you to manipulate it in such a way that you can actually see where it is that you're going to be clipping and what is going to be safe. In this case, I wanted to clip off some of the data that was gone a little misplaced uh, here at the ends. So at the top here, you can see that we have a little bit of an interesting solve. Some of that is from people in the background, cars moving around. And then a lot of this ground data we don't really need, and it's a little inconsistent. So I was able to trim that down and bring it in with a box clip node. From there, we have ourselves a nice little piece of geometry, and we're able to go back through and do another axis align so that we're able to see it fully. Now we're at zero, zero, or roughly where we want it to be, and we got a nice clean solve out. Uh, one of the things that you can do to kind of evaluate where your mesh is at before moving on to the next steps is you can take a look at the overall topology. So this may look like it's smooth shaded and good to go, but if we go ahead and turn on our wireframe, you'll notice that it got a little bit darker. Well, it actually didn't get darker. That's actually the wireframe that's being placed on it. So you can see that this is a very high poly count mesh and we're in this demonstration, we're working with 1.2 million polys for this tree stump uh, alone. Now, from there, uh, we're putting it into a brief little transform, making sure that it is perfectly aligned at zero, zero. And at this point, we're going to be splitting off from the uh, singular hierarchy that we're in now and bringing it into two different hierarchies. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And you'll see that we split off into our green and our red section. I just uh, labeled these for the sake of clarity, and you are more than welcome to uh, copy this uh, node graph and this node style uh, in order to keep things organized. The uh, main goal of splitting off from this is to create uh, two instances where we have a low poly version of our mesh and a high poly version of the mesh. Luckily, the high poly version we already have from the solve and all of the cleaning up that we did previously. And we can go ahead and just do a quick calculation of the normals to have that in place. Now, this is really all that we have to do with the high poly version since all of the material data and all of the uh, detail and geometry is already placed uh, in the scene 
and we know what that looks like based off of what we cleaned up. The low poly version, however, is a little bit more complicated and we want to make sure that we're getting that ready for our game development pipeline. In this case, the bulk of the work is going to be done by our poly reduce node. So <clears throat> this node in particular uh, does a really good job of retopologizing your uh, data down to something that's a lot more manageable. So if I go into the parameters here, you'll notice that there's a few different ways that we can go about doing this. So in our case, uh, I knew that I wanted my mesh to be 5,000 polygons, and this can vary uh, depending on the project that you're working on, but I knew that for this high quality of a mesh, since it's going to be the only thing that I'm going to be really looking at, I want this to be a nice uh, even amount of polygons. So I chose to output polygon count. You can go by percentage, you can go uh, percentage of points, and you can also output a point count if that's something that uh, you're wanting to focus on, and that can be used for a lot of VFX pipelines as well. In my case, polygon count was a very simplified version of going through and made it a lot easier since we're doing such a large reduction. You'll see that if I kept that on percentage, I would have been at 0.49% of the original model. And in order to tweak that, it would be relatively difficult to kind of dial that in. So being able to just type in that I want 5,000 polygons was very quick and simple. From here, we get into our automatic UVs. Now, this is part of the game dev pipeline, and it is an incredibly useful tool. In order to visualize this, I put on a quick just UV quick shade. And let me turn the materials back on here. So the UV Quickshade does a really good job of showing you where it is that your UVs are going to be in the final product. Now with this uh, particular UV unwrap method, um, <clears throat> it was going through and doing a planar projection onto the model, which is why you can see that our more flat sections have very nice clean uh, UVs, and it gets a little bit muddled around our connecting points here. However, for the sake of um, development and the sake of quick iteration, these UVs are going to be just fine as far as baking these normals and details onto the low poly model. However, if you did want to do something more custom, more shader oriented within your game engine, you may want to consider re-topologizing and redoing these UVs by hand. However, for this pipeline, I wanted to create something that was fully automated and something that we could very quickly iterate on. From there, we do one more quick calculation of the normals on the low res version now that everything has been retopologized and everything has uh, good UVs. From there, we get into our maps baker. Now, this is a powerhouse for this pipeline. So, being able to go through and take the input from the high poly mesh that we had created and the low poly mesh and bake all of those details down in such a way that we are getting all of the detail out of this high uh, poly mesh and baking it down into something that's much more reasonable for game engines. So as we bring this in, we can go through and see that our diffuse channel and our normals are being baked in. You have a lot more options for this, such as roughness, uh, ambient occlusion, all kinds of different maps that you can generate or transfer. However, for the sake of this demonstration, diffuse and normal work just fine. Uh, one notable glitch that this system does have is the diffuse on the game dev maps baker tends to include a much darker version of the diffuse that we were looking at previously. So you'll see that if I go back to our high poly version, we have a much more evenly lit and much easier to see version of the map. However, in our SOPS baker, uh, it is a much darker version. This is one part of the pipeline that I was not able to solve during the three months uh, here at Drexel. Um, <clears throat> but a quick fix to this is bringing the diffuse map into a program such as Photoshop and upping the brightness ever so slightly. Or if you are in a shader environment like Unreal, uh, adding a power node to this to increase the overall brightness of the map works just fine. Uh, from there, we have our diffuse, our normal, and we have all of the details of the high poly model 
bake down onto the low poly topology. And from there, you can do a direct export into Unreal Engine. You can do an export into Unity, uh, any game, de uh, game development pipeline of your choice. <clears throat> However, uh, for this case, I was able to go through and send it directly to my Sketchfab account. So this um, node here is part of the game dev pipeline as well and allows you to render directly out and export to Sketchfab using uh, your own information, your own tags, categories, and descriptions. And here we are in Sketchfab with the final product, and you can see that we have all of the details that we originally had in the high poly model transferred over nicely to the low poly model, a little bit upped in the brightness so that we can see all of the different details. Uh, but a lot of these grooves in this tree and a lot of the normals made their way in nicely and from a reasonable distance in any game engine we're approaching that nice hyper realistic feel that we're trying to go for. Uh, all in all this entire solve was done using Houdini 18 um, and the game dev pipeline as well as the Alice Vision plugin so it was nearly free. Um, outside of the price of the Houdini license. So for indie development, this is a perfect way of getting really high quality assets um, in a short amount of time for very little budget. Uh, this asset in particular is free to download. So if anybody likes to go through and see the topology or use this in their own uh, projects or just examine the pipeline further, uh, the link will be in the description. Thank you all so much for your support and for watching this tutorial, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I will be actively updating this and bringing in new tutorials as I further this research. Uh, but again, huge shout out to Deborah Isaac for her help and her support in all of this, and I'm looking forward to new tutorials in the future. Bye.